Welcome to the Marvelous Designer Introduction Series. In this series, we will cover the different methods of basic garment creation and getting started in Marvelous Designer. In this lesson, we will be making a t-shirt by drafting a basic outline of the pattern and draping it on an avatar, and then making adjustments by using information from the strain map and how the garment drapes on the avatar. To make it easier to follow along with the lesson, please reset your user settings or make sure your mouse presets are on the three button or regular mouse. If you do not know how to change your settings, please watch our UI video first. For those using Marvelous Designer 9.5 and above, we have grouped more tools together for a cleaner user interface. Please long press the left mouse button on the tool to view a list of all of the tools in the tool group. So to begin, we will be importing our avatar into the workspace. I am opening the library tab, going to the avatar folder, selecting mail B, and double clicking on the avatar file to import him into the workspace. Once he is imported into the workspace, I am going to go ahead and close the library tab. Next, we move the shadow of the avatar so that the torso is in the 2D window, so we can use that torso as a reference to create the pattern. We will also use the center line as a reference and make one half of the pattern. Going up to the toolbar and the long pressing the polygon icon, we have the polygon, rectangle, and ellipse tools. For this pattern, we will be using the polygon tool or the H hotkey. This tool can create segment points by left clicking alone. And if we hold control and then click, we can create curve points. If you make mistakes or you want to take a step back, you can just use the backspace or the delete keys. And if you hold shift, you can create perfectly straight lines along a 45 or 90 degree angles. If you want to cancel the creation of your polygon, you can just use the escape key or control Z. First, we will start by making our front shirt pattern piece. Using left click as I start drafting the neckline, I'm holding control to make my curve points starting from that center line. Note as you start drafting your pattern to try to keep all of your segment points at 90 degree angles as best you can. If they are not, the pattern pieces will not flow smoothly into each other. As you can see, as I go above the shoulder, I do want to go a little further than the shadow because this will need to wrap around the avatar's shoulder. Then as I create my segment line for my shoulder piece, I am making sure to keep the line as parallel to the shoulder as I can. Again, finishing the low point shoulder with a segment point. As you make the armhole, you want to curve in for the arm joint and curve out for under the arm so that it can wrap around the torso. It may be difficult as you start to create the armhole to create a perfect 90 degree angle, but don't worry, you can always fix that in the next step. Next is the easier part. We hold shift to make a straight line down to about the hip area, and then make that a 90 degree angle to create the hem. And lastly, using the two little purple lines indicating that those two points are intersecting each other, I go ahead and close the pattern. Once the polygon is closed, the pattern will fill with the 2D texture. To toggle this on and off, we can go up to the toolbar and select the Show 2D Textures tool, or the Shift T hotkey, and we can just toggle this on and off. At this point, you can make adjustments if you feel that they are necessary by using the Edit Curvature tool, which allows you to select an entire line and make adjustments to that curve. You can also use the Edit Curve Point tool. With this tool, you can add curve points, you can delete curve points, and you can adjust individual curve points. So go ahead and feel free to pause to make adjustments if you feel that they are necessary. Now that we have created a front pattern piece, we do need a back. So we will use the Transform Pattern Tool, or the A hotkey, and we can right-click the pattern itself, select Copy or Control c and then right-click in the 2D window, choosing Mirror Paste or Control r and then using left-click to place that mirror pattern in the 2D workspace. The reason we are working with a copy of the front is so that we can have matching shoulders and side seams. We have two half pattern pieces, so next we need to unfold them. So what we're going to do is use the Edit Pattern tool and select the center line on both patterns, right click and choose Unfold with Symmetric Editing. 
Unfolding the segment line with symmetrical editing turns that line into a dotted mirror line, indicating that the pattern is symmetrical across that line, and anything done to one side is applied to the other. This is very similar to symmetrically linking your pattern pieces. Now that we have a full front and a back, we can go in the 3D window and move our patterns out of the way and go to the avatar display options and choose the show arrangement points. Selecting a front pattern piece and applying it to the front arrangement point, we can place it around our avatar and do the same with the back pattern piece. Then we can turn off arrangement points for now. And then we need to drape it on our avatar. So in the 2D window, we're gonna choose segment sewing tool or the N hotkey and sew the shoulders together and the side seams together. And you can double check your work in the 3D window. Then we simulate using the default option or just use the spacebar. Once it is draped on our avatar, we can turn on the strain map and see how it fits him. It looks like it's fitting okay in the front. It's a little tight in the back and the back neck needs to be raised. So the first thing we're going to do is raise the back neck. Using the edit curvature tool, we will readjust the back neckline. So it's perfectly straight and then simulate again to see how it fits. Checking the strain map again. It is a little tight on the shoulder. We are going to use the edit pattern tool to increase the height of the back shoulder piece just a little bit. I am then pulling on the garment to see how my changes have affected the drape. We can see there is a little strain in the underarm, but that is okay. We are going to leave it as it is and see how it reacts when we have a sleeve sewn into that seam line. To create the sleeve, we are going to go up to the toolbar and choose the rectangle tool or the S hotkey. And we're just going to create a rectangle about the same height as the sleeve hole and about a little less wide. Once that's created, we're going to go ahead and turn back on the arrangement points and place it on the front sleeve arrangement point. I know this sleeve will fit if the rectangle goes through the center of the top and bottom arrangement points. Next, we are just going to move the sleeve up a little higher after turning off the strain mat, just so the high point of the rectangle is at the high point of that shoulder piece. Now that the rectangle is in place, we can use the 3D line pattern tool to draw the outline of the sleeve using the armhole as our reference. Again, left click creates segment points, control makes curve points, and shift makes straight lines along the loops. Making the curve match as best we can under the underarm and double clicking to finish the line. Once the line is finished, we can then use the edit tool to turn that line into an internal line by right clicking and choosing convert to internal shape, which we can then interact with in the 2D window. And using the edit pattern tool, we can right click that line and choose cut. And then delete that top half because we don't need that anymore. And then convert that little point to a curve point. I'll go ahead and edit my curve a little bit more just so that it matches up with the armhole as it's wrapped around the avatar's arm. You can see it looks a little better there. And I am going to shorten the sleeve because it is just going to be a short sleeve t-shirt. Now that we have created the front half of the pattern, we do need to create the back half. So we're going to right click that segment line and choose unfold, not unfold with symmetric editing, unfold because our pattern does not need to be symmetrical across that line. Now that we've made our pattern piece, we can go ahead and use the free sewing tool or the N hotkey and sew the top of our sleeve into our armhole to see how it fits. Holding shift to sew multiple pieces together and then sewing the underarm together and then spacebar to simulate. 
pulling it a little bit, it does look like the sleeve is a little big on the bottom. So we're just gonna go ahead and taper the underarm in and curve the sleeve a little bit, just like a normal t-shirt sleeve would be curved. Converting that point into a curve point and simulating. And you can see it already fits a lot closer. It does look like the top of the sleeve needs to have some length added to it so it rests a little lower on the arm. We can also check the strain map to check the fit. There doesn't appear to be any tension, but it is warping just a little bit in the back where the armhole is. So we can use the edit curvature tool and make the back armhole less concave. We can see that it fits better already. Turning off the strain map. Next, we do want to make a symmetrical pattern. So we're choosing symmetrical pattern with sewing or control D and bringing it to the other side. And then just bringing that pattern over to his arm to simulate again. Now we can double check the fit one last time for the sleeves. We do want to increase the height of the sleeve cap. You can see the volume it adds to the top. which makes the sleeve rest lower on the arm. To create our neck ribbing, we are going to use the Edit Pattern tool, selecting one front segment line and one back segment line. In my case, the number is 276, so I'm going to keep that in mind. Going up to the Rectangle tool, we will click once, which brings up our pop-up window, and we can go ahead and input in the width, 276. And then for the height, we are going to input 13. The reason we are doing 13 millimeters is because that is about the width in real life. Now that we've created half of our pattern piece, we can go ahead and select one of those sides and unfold it just like the sleeve. Then turning on arrangement points one more time, we can then go ahead and apply it to the left or the right neck arrangement points. Next, we just use the segment sewing tool to sew the two edges together. And then using the free sewing tool to sew the ribbing to the neck, again holding shift and letting go. You may notice in the 2D window it looks crossed, but in the 3D window it is fine. So go ahead and simulate. And it brings the ribbing down. You will see that the ribbing is a little too big for the neckline. And the reason for this is in real life, this is a knit. It will be 75 or 80% the length that it's sewing into. So we can just change the size of the ribbing by just making it visually about 80% the size. That does finish our basic t-shirt. So we can go up to file and save as. Going to garment. I am naming it drape t-shirt but you can name it whatever you want. And that is the end of this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Here are the links to the next videos in this tutorial series. The order does not matter, but we do recommend watching all of these tutorials as they will feature different methods of beginning creation of basic blocks, which you will use later in the tutorial series. If you liked this video, hit the like button below and subscribe for more. If you have any questions about getting started in Marvelous Designer or this lesson, please leave a comment below and we will do our best to answer your questions. If you want more information on Marvelous Designer, check out our website, forum, and official Discord channels, which are all linked in the description box below.